And if you recall back to the Bahamas, we traveled a little bit buddy boating with friends of ours who were on an identical boat to ours, another Mahi 36, um, and they're right beside us. Um, so the cool thing about this, um, not only is it good to have friends in the yard you can share tools, um, but we can also share some expertise as well. So on Erie Cat, uh, theirs is a Mahi 36 2007, and they are avid sailors. They don't like to use their diesel engines, so they've actually decided to change out their diesel engines for electric. So they are doing what we wanted to do with Barefoot, except we didn't have the budget. <laughs> Um, so they've ended up getting two Torquedo motors and they're going to be installing those. They're like pod drive ones. Davey will go more in depth in that because he's going to be helping a little bit with the fiberglassing of that project. Um, so it's kind of cool that we can be on the hard next to them. Is we can set up on level right. this way and this way. Um, we can make the other part so then we'll make use that as a, as a form, as a mold. Yeah. Um, and then we'll cut and taper that and we'll join it to this piece Once and you then the mold Exactly, so we'll start with step one, which is to basically get two conformed pieces. That's already perfect shape I can see so we'll do another one for the other side And then we'll just we'll just lay up some glass as, as our starting point. Okay, okay. We have a lot of cardboard, want cardboard? Well, I've, I've got two pieces oh, already okay. cut Cool no, I'm not taking any responsibility for this vessel. What, uh... They're converting to being fully electric. So he's got control of pretty much everything, but he wants a little bit of a hand with the fiberglass in, just so that we can actually position the new sail drives into position. So this is what we're going to be doing, and what well, I'm going to be helping him out with. He's going to be sanding the bottom on my boat, so I don't have to do that. And um, that's what we're going to crack on with today. So we're going to start making the first part of the form, which is basically the shape of the hull. Um, and then after that he's going to bring back some parts from the motors themselves which is like the mounting points so that we can actually start to make sure that the sail dives do actually sit straight into the water so but we need a starting point which is the shape of the hull so the new sail drives need to be flat yeah whereas this is sloping up so we need to actually do this basically so that they can come straight down so we do need to make some adjustments on the inside but the outside is where i'm going to be starting what came with the engine kit was this piece of plastic um, and there's very very limited instructions as well with the motor kit itself so from what we could gather this piece of plastic here you could shape it form it put it against the hull bolt through and clamp it together like a sandwich but to be honest, one, we've taken sail drives out so we've got a big hole. And two, who wants just a random piece of plastic in there when you could actually make and shape this out of fiberglass so it's actually part of the hull. Um, so we decided to make a mold and that's what I made here. So as you can see with the mold, if I get it the right way around, that actually fits inside of it. Now the way I did it, as it, you can actually see here, if I plug that in a little bit. You can see obviously with the contour, this is the contour of the hull. And this is the plug that they gave you to uh, chuck onto the hull. You see how far off that would have been. So what I decided to do, make this. But what I did first, I actually got a couple of pieces of 1708, uh, wetted them out, put them to laminate them together, wetted them out and pushed them up against the hull and used lots and lots of tape, which actually then conformed to the shape of the hull. So that ended up being the outside piece here. So that actually fits the contour of the vessel. So then what I did with my flat piece, obviously, now I need to get it to shape this. So what I did, I laid it on the top, I drew around it and I cut a hole so that this would actually fit physically through it. And that piece that I had was then this shape because I held it up to the boat and marked it and got all my measurements. Then what I could do is I turned it upside down and having obviously <laughs> this piece was sticking through uh, with my new shape being angled along here. So then what I did, I simply built over it, built over it multiple times. Um, so we got, so then I could pop it out and I had a rough mold. When I went to put it back on the boat, it was actually slightly misshaped. So I ended up building it up ever so slightly and uh, then continuing on to make a nice strong mold that we could pull two plugs out of, one for either side. So actually over the last couple of days, I've been making a mold. So this is my mold part. Unfortunately, I made it a little bit skinny and it wasn't quite perfect. So what I've done is with some thickened epoxy around here. I've now got all the measurements and lineups right so that we are definitely in line with the hull and uh, we've got the water line as well. So the, the base of the engine will actually mount under here. 
Um, but this is the mold part, but I had to just adjust it slightly. So that's been my project this morning. So I've got to let that one cure. So this piece here is going to be solid fiberglass with matting, resin, etc, etc. Um, and then once that's done, we'll make up, we'll make a mark on the hull. For example, if it's there, make a mark around and we'll countersink it about quarter of an inch into the hull. And then obviously we've got these, these wings here that come off. Um, they're going to be for tabbing in. So we're going to be able to tab it all the way around on the outside, several layers, and then fair it and put it in. And that'll leave a nice flat surface for where the new, what are they, torpedoes, aren't they? Torpedo motors are actually going to be mounted. Put white pigment? I did add a little bit of white pigment just to make it prettier for when it comes out of the mold. Seventeen oh eight, it's got so many benefits because it's um it's a mixture of different maddings, basically. Uh, the strength from fiberglass is not in the resin itself. Yeah, resin's strong, but it's resin will crack if it hasn't got any reinforcement in it. So with the 1708, it's actually, we should find a piece. Let's piece it. So you've got chop strand, which is a lot of people think chop strand is basically the, the ultimate of um, fiberglass. Now it's, you need to remember, with chop strand that's not sewn together, which I think there's some in here, I think, I think next door bought some. Yeah, here, for example, here. Just open this up, let's have a little look, see? So this sort of stuff here, which we call chop strand, it's really good because all the fibers go in different directions, completely random, which is fantastic. But this stuff here that's not sewn together is actually only for use with polyester or vinyl ester because it's got a slight glue which holds it together. I think it's called styrene, don't quote me on that. Leave it in the comments if you know so if it's right or wrong. Um, I think it's called styrene. So polyester resin will melt that glue and put all the fibers into the, the layup, into the mix. Whereas um, epoxy resin doesn't melt it. So it really doesn't actually incorporate into all the layers and everything else very well. So don't use this stuff with epoxy unless you buy something like 1708 which you can see here we've got biaxial material on one side and we've got chop strand on the other and the fact that they built it like this in the workshop means they didn't have to use the glue surface so this stuff here will work with epoxy Now you're just building it up. Yeah, I'm just gonna build it up with the I'm gonna use like it's not all just 1708. The more different layers and constructions you can get in there, it all going in different directions is better. Um because you want all the different angles, everything working in it's like rebar when you build concrete, hey? If that makes sense. What was that? Can you too sing late, your little song late, again? Too late, too late, too late. Sing your little song. <laughs> Acetone in a fresh gut is never good. What was thing. the song? No, no, that only gets sung once and it's never when the camera's on. Damn it! Oh, I need peel ply, please. Yep. Everyone loves me to acetone and a finger cut. Alright. Alright, so this is the peel ply stuff. Do those scissors work on it? <laughs> I just don't like this stuff. So what is the idea of peel ply? So you don't have to do sand. Can you just pull tension on it? Oh, screw sorry. the camera and screw questions for a minute. I'm trying to make this work. Does it matter which side you put on it? 
This is going to the peel ply is going to go between the hull and the mold, and then it will conform to it when it's set. It'll be exactly the right shape. So that one dry. That should be part one. We've got to make another one for the other side tomorrow, but anyway. One at a time, only one mold. I'm not building two damn molds, I can tell you that. All right, it's a beautiful morning here. Getting set to work already. Let's see how it looks, eh? Oh, she did fizzle a bit. She did. Ah, she's good. Came out of the mold, easy. Came out of the mold. Than that. Yeah, but it got a little bit hot obviously on the top. It's the piece. Are you happy with it? Yeah. She came out more black than I thought she would, so she obviously picked up some of the paint and the wax. But we'll give it all a good clean up. Slip it down. Gonna have to take some then, off the top, eh? Yeah. Clean up that edge there. And then Oh, that's backwards. That'll be, we'll, we'll make a mark around it once this is all cleaned up. Put a pen mark around, and then that will then get countersunk in using this lip to bond it in. And then again from the top, we're gonna to be working that and filling this hole up. So, she's pretty good. One of two, we need to weigh more and more. But at least we got the mold now. Yep. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Still looking at your mold yeah. or your piece. Well, I think I'm going to start trimming this up a little bit because then when Lonnie arrives, he can we can actually mark that up. He can start doing the grinding so it's ready to actually be installed. But needs power tools. They're upstairs, so I need you to pass me my, my box now. The heavy box. Mm -hmm. We also have an issue, guys. We have a big issue. Our car. Car is broken down. Car is broken. Good thing we don't need to use it. The past few mornings we've been waking up and it's been completely flat like this, so... It's either a dodgy valve or got a hole in it, one or the other, so... So before we, uh... Before we go back in the water, we have to fix this. All right, guys, so the parts that I'm calling plugs, they're finished throughout the mold. Um, we have actually just put one on, which Erica can show you in a minute. But I wanted to put one on first, um, just to see how well it went and uh, get the ease of the feel. And then we'll pop the second one in and we'll film putting the second one in. But the plugs have come out really, really well. These are made with epoxy and many, 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 many layers of 1708 glass in the middle. So you saw the mold that I was building. This is what came out of it. And uh, Lorne yesterday drilled the hole. This is for, well, it's basically for the power stock that goes down towards the electrical pod. And there's three bolts that actually physically hold it to the boat. So now what we got to do is we've got to glue it up in place. So the preparation is done, cutting back into the hull here. So this will go up with thickened epoxy on it, which will then set it into place. And it'll be slightly leveled out. So the thickened epoxy will hold it there along with the jack into place. We'll fill the extra little gap, which is just a maneuverable place, just so that we could get 100% get the line, uh, make sure that these pods are in line with the hulls. And then after that, what we've got, if we come back over to the table, I can show you. Well, the tiny table. The tiny table. 
I've pre-cut this glass. So if you imagine that's up against the hull and that's the exposed area. Sorry about the noise in the background, but there's a boat lift moving around. <coughs> so there'll be one layer, 17 away glass, up against the hull. Then a second one, getting it the right way around. And a third. So that's how we're glassing it into the hull, expanding out into the area that we've tapered off. What's the thickness? Like peanut butter. That's too thin. That peanut butter is too warm. <laughs> Matt's using an additive here, it's a West System additive, the 403, this is a microfibers, which is good, very good for thickened epoxy for strength. So it's no good if you're doing fairing, because if you've got to sand that stuff, <laughs> it's, it's like bloody concrete. Peanut butter. Peanut butter, look, doesn't fall off the knife. Here we go. Make right sure you put it the right way. <laughs> All right, you want to get the jack up? Yeah. Check that too. Make sure that's straight. <laughs> Looks good, but that's not really air good. There. No, it's not air. There. That's just coloration. Don't worry about that. That's okay. good. Looks that's good. good. Very nice job. <laughs> Put it there. It. Put it there, brother. Let's hope your boat don't sink. <laughs> Okay, so it's been a couple days since we put the plugs, as Davey called them, into the boat. Since then, Lonnie and Terry have put a few more layers of a five ounce cloth going down the sides just to tab it in a little bit more. And then they put one more big sheet of 1708 all the way around it again. So that is pretty freaking solid now. All right guys, so that's where we've got to so far. You can see the fairy fill is going on. We're attached to the hull. It's nice and nice and solid. So there is a small amount of fiberglass in left to do, which I will show you in the next episode. That's just to join it together as a plug for the inside to make it super, super strong. And we're actually gonna put a big backing plate on there as well, which wasn't any part of the instructions. Something we want to do just to make it a little bit more structurally sound. So stay tuned, lots more coming. In, and also we're going to be getting around to showing you the batteries the control systems and installing the motors themselves